Hi, I'm Steve Croft. I'm a researcher with the Breakthrough Listen project at Berkeley SETI Research Center. Uh, this is Chris Schott, our cameraman. And uh, we have a GoPro Omni here that we're going to take up to the top of the Green Bank Telescope. We're pretty excited today to get a unique viewpoint uh, of what's going on here, both with the telescope in general, and uh, this is the one of the workhorse uh, telescopes and instruments that we use for Breakthrough Listen. And so uh, Mike Holstein here is the business manager at Green Bank, and he's going to be uh, leading our tour, and we'll be telling us a little bit about uh, where we're heading. Yeah, hey folks. So, yeah, the GBT is behind us. This is the largest fully steerable radio telescope in the world, and is proud to be part of the Breakthrough Listen project. We'd like to give you a little bit of a tour today of the telescope. And so if you look behind me, we're going to head just sort of straight away towards the... Uh, you see some stairs, but we're actually going to take an elevator up to the uh, top of the Allidade, but we'll probably make a stop over at one of the trucks so that we can talk about how the telescope moves on the foundation. But we'll go up to the top of this tower that you see right behind me. We're going to walk all the way across the walkway that you see off to uh, above my head, and then we're going to take another lift that takes us diagonally up the feed arm all the way to the top of the receiver room. That's as far as we can get uh, without having to have safety gear on and about uh, 450 feet above ground level. Along the way, we'll probably make a stop at the uh, elevation gear too so that you can see how the telescope is driven in elevation. We've made our way over to the track that the GBT rotates on. It can turn a full 360 degrees here, but as you can imagine, with the weight of this telescope at almost 17 million pounds, what you see of the foundation here is only about the top three feet. It goes 25 feet into the ground and sits on top of bedrock, comes up, and then we have this steel track that the wheels that the telescope actually turns on, uh, rides on. It's a flat track and the, each corner of the telescope has what we call a truck. At each truck, there are four wheels. These are five foot diameter steel wheels. It means we have 16 wheels that this telescope rides on. It also means that each wheel carries more than a million pounds to the foundation. The motors that power this, because it's such a highly balanced piece of machinery and a highly effective uh, bearing system uh, are only about 30 horsepower motors and they're pretty quiet. You hear the blowers from them right now. So we've made it up to the top of the Allidade structure. That's the last part of the telescope that moves in azimuth. From here on, the entire telescope also can move in elevation. For us to be able to see as much of the night sky as possible, this telescope tilts from about 95 degrees to down to about five degrees. And you can see sort of the hubs on the wheel that's back here. But this also means that any cabling and any piping that we've got that needs to go all the way to the top of the telescope has to pass through this elevation point. And these cables then have to be able to move in those same 95 to five degree um, uh, runs that the telescope moves in elevation. And these are cryogenics lines, they're cable lines, they're water piping lines. And all of that happens right here at the elevation axis. We're in what's called the actuator room. So one of the challenges we had with the GBT was creating uh, an active surface that can actually move the panels of the surface to compensate for wind, for gravity, for thermal expansion and contraction uh, due to the sun heating part of the telescope and not other parts of the telescope. But another challenge that we have is that we can't control those panels using wireless signals. You see all of the boards here behind me in, in these rows of racks that controls each one of the actuators. So there's a cable in this room for every actuator that's on the telescope. Now there are 2,004 panels that we're controlling. And I believe the number is more like 2,293 actuators because of some that are around the perimeter of the telescope. So to control each one of those 
separately takes a pretty big uh, effort by the equipment that's in this room. Well, we made it up to the dish level. This is the point that the, uh, is basically the vertex of the parabola. And behind me, you see the, uh, the dish for the reflector dish for the GBT. We're at about 200 feet above ground level on our way up to the very top of the structure where the uh, focus is. The panels behind me are about the size of a twin mattress. Uh, they're aluminum with a, a backing structure to make them somewhat resilient to uh, structural load. But in order to maintain the parabolic structure of this dish so that we keep a good focal point, uh, each, each corner has an actuator. And you see the actuators here behind me, the uh, little silver hat type units. And they can move plus or minus an inch up and down. As I said, this is 2.3 acres. The West Virginia University football stadium, for instance, would fit in this. And I know it's hard to believe that because of the lack of perspective, but we're gonna head all the way to the top of the telescope. And from up there, we'll be able to look down on this dish and it'll give you maybe a better idea of the size of it. 